So come on, let's go. All right, let's sing this out, guys. I was an orphan lost at the fall Running away when I'd hear you call But Father, you worked your will And I had no righteousness of my own I had no right to draw near your throne But Father, you loved me still And in love before you laid the world's foundation Destined to adopt me as your own You have raised me up so high above my station I'm a child of God by grace and grace alone oh. Take that true thing guys It's by nothing that we did It's only by Jesus coming down and Leaving his throne for us Come on, let's sing this you left your home to seek out the lost You knew the great and terrible cause But Jesus, your face was sad And I worked my fingers down to the bone But nothing I did could ever atone But Jesus, you paid my debt By your blood I have redemption and salvation Lord, you died that I might reap what you have sown. And you rose that I might be a new creation. I am born again by grace and grace alone. I was in darkness all of my life. I swore I knew the day from the night. Spirit, you made me see. I swore I knew the way on my own Head full of rocks, a heart made of stone The Spirit, you moved in me And at your touch, my sleeping spirit was awakened On my darkened heart, the light of Christ has shone Gone into a kingdom that cannot be shaken Heaven citizen by grace and grace alone So I'll stand in faith by grace and grace alone I will run the race by grace and grace alone I will slay my sin by grace and grace alone I will reach the end by grace and grace alone. It's only by your grace. It's only by his grace, guys. I want us to take that truth in. There's no amount of work. There's no good deeds that could ever impress him enough to get us into heaven. It's only by the blood that Jesus shed. And that makes him so worthy of all of our praise. Worthy of every single song we could ever sing to him. Everything. Our entire lives. So let's sing this out. Worthy. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Sing Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. 
worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you sing worthy and holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me you are worthy you are worthy Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Oh Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. And oh, there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes and wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me your heart and lead me in your 
Father, I ask that you lead us in your love to our families, to our communities, to those around us, Lord. Most importantly, lead us in your love to you. Teach us to love you. Teach us to trust you. That when the world gets crazy, when things get chaotic, we have a firm foundation on who you are, Jesus. Not on what we do, but on the promises that you have given us. So Father, I just pray that you speak to us today. You bless all the families represented here right now. The best that we know how, we choose to worship and lay down our lives at your feet, Jesus. So we love you, we praise you, and we pray all these things in your mighty, precious name, the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, amen. You guys, Enjoy the rest of the service. Cool. It is so awesome to be spending time with you once again. Y'all, I'm always so fired up to be in these conversations with you based on the word that God gave to us to live out this year, which is ready. And as you know, the idea behind ready is something that we've been talking about all year long. We are ready right now, the way you are currently constructed, who you are in this moment, we are all ready to make an impact on this world. We are ready to listen to God, love people, learn our purpose, and link to our community. And in this series that we're in, we've been taking a look at what it looks like to have a second nature. How we can all do these things by leaning on what Jesus has asked us to do, which is developing a second nature. We can develop the nature of Jesus. That's the second nature that we should be striving for, which is what you're ready for. You are ready to do things in your life to develop that nature of Jesus. You're so ready that all you have to do is ask. You can ask for all the stuff when you are developing the second nature of Jesus. Ask for it. He actually encourages us to ask. And let's look at what Jesus had to say as recorded by his friend and disciple Matthew. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who for everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a steak? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask him? All right, Jesus is super clear. He wants you to go and ask. Ask your Father in heaven for the things you need, for sure, but also for the things you're looking for. For some of us, that feels kind of weird. Maybe you grew up in a house where you learned that when you ask for something, that you were actually being a nuisance. Maybe in your house, there wasn't a parent that was very generous, right? Like they, they just kind of kept things to themselves. Maybe it was because of their personality, or, or sometimes maybe you didn't experience generosity because they didn't have anything to give you. They couldn't give you anything more than what they gave you. And maybe none, none of you want to ask because you feel like you should only be praying about the holiest of holies, which isn't a bad thing. All these crazy holiness prayers can be great, but it doesn't have to be the whole prayer, right? We can be pra praying for practical things. Really at the root of all these things is that we don't know what the right things are 
for us to be praying for. Author and Bishop N.T. Wright breaks it down like this. He writes, for most of us, the problem is not that we are too eager to ask for the wrong things. The problem is that we are not nearly eager enough to ask for the right things. Remember, in earlier in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, we heard him give us the model prayer, the Lord's Prayer. And in that prayer, we're supposed to be asking for what we need. Then right after that, he explains how we should view money and possessions, right? Understanding how these things line up. So now Jesus is at the point where he's telling us to ask, seek, and knock. So at this point, we should have a good idea of what we should be praying for. And for all of us, we know what we should be praying for, right? Now, if you don't know what you should be praying for, hold on, stop what you're doing and listen. What you should be praying for is so specific and individualized that I couldn't possibly give you a single blanket statement for everybody out there. I'm sorry, I don't have that answer for you, but you know what? God does. And he wants to hear from you. He wants you to ask. Ask God what you should be asking for. I know it sounds weird, but it's the right thing to do. I mean, we go to a search engine, right? And ask all kinds of questions all the time. So we can ask God, what should I be asking for in my life right now? Now here's the deal. I'm the kind of person that doesn't ask God for a lot of things. I have just kind of ex ex accepted whatever he gives me, right? And I try to be as happy as I can with whatever he gives me. And then I try to do my best to leverage whatever I'm given to help out the kingdom as best I can. Well, about a year ago, I was in prayer and I was asking God to speak to me. I was asking him for direction for, for me and our church at Kuo moving forward. And very clearly, I understood what he wanted me to do. He said, ask me. And then he laid out the exact things he wanted me to be praying for. Then he's like, why haven't you been asking for this? This other thing I'd kind of been fighting with and, and trying to figure out. It was a weird thing for me because I, I never really wanted to bother God, right? Like, just give me what you got and I'm happy with it. Trying to be content. But there he was telling me to ask him for these things. And there is a power in that. Really, it's because we are putting real trust in God that he can come through with us. Not just accepting it, but also asking him for what he wants. So I want to give you space to do just that. Let's take a little bit of time right now to ask God. God, what should I be asking for right now? I want to give you a minute to sit with him in silence and ask him that question. The next action that Jesus lays out for us is to seek. We all remember the game that we played growing up, hide and seek. A group of people would go out and hide and there was one person left to seek them out. The game wouldn't end until everybody was found. The same thing is happening with us here. It's good for us to go to God and ask questions. Ask for the right things we need to be asking about, but there's also a personal responsibility to this. It would be like if we were like, Lord, Please let me win the lottery. But we never actually got out of our house to buy a lottery ticket. You gotta buy a ticket to have a chance to win. This is like us in our lives. Yes, God could miraculously like have a ticket fly into our pocket and do all that stuff. Deliver the exact things we need. But here's the deal. The reason these things are miracles is because they are so rare. We can't expect the miracle. We gotta get out 
and start moving in the direction that God wants us to. It's not enough to know what to do. We actually have to do it. And I think God will bless your efforts. If you're moving in the direction that you're praying about, if you have lined up with God's will, he's going to make sure you are moving closer to what he wants you to do. God wants his own will to be done. But you got to walk the path. You have to do it. I know. We all want the easy fix, but man, it doesn't always come like that. If you want to be in good shape, you got to work out. You got to eat well. If you want a better job, you got to start looking out there and applying. If you're tired of people walking all over you, then you have to put up healthy boundaries. And I know it's easier to say these things than it is to put them into practice. Y'all, I have multiple things in my life that I could list in here that I'm not doing the right way. You aren't alone in this. And that's kind of the beauty of all this. Because we have a community around us for when things get hard. We have a group of people here at Akuo that would bend over backwards to help you in the thing that God has been getting you to ask about. I'd like to be the first one to say that if you need anything, I got your back. But in addition to that, you can turn to any of the Akuo community also. Y'all, that's what we do. So what I want you to do is take a moment, pray about this, talk to God about it. I want you to think about the direction that God has started leading you in from that last time that we had, and then ask God to help you find a person or some people to help you in that direction. So let's take another few minutes to ask God about who the right people are for you to take this next step in your life. Okay, so you ask God, you have some potential partners in your life, and then Jesus says to keep knocking. You go back to God. You ask him to open the right door. And y'all, we all say like, open the right doors. I just need to find like the right pathways for me to figure this out. While that's logical, I actually don't think this is the best way that we should be going about this. I think the right question for us to be asking God, the right thing to be asking God about isn't like the full path or the many doors or the door after door after door after door, but rather just the next door, showing us the next step. It's like this. I think God gives us one of two things. We can either get the view of the mountain in the distance or just the next step in the path right in front of us. Because if we got to see the whole path, if we got to understand the entire plan and all the details that God had for us, 
it kind of undercuts the point of us trusting in him, right? I mean, if we knew the plan, then we wouldn't need him anymore. We already knew each step. There is no faith needed as we take them. So when we go to God in this, let's not jump ahead. Let's just ask for the next right thing. And y'all, the story of Akuo is the greatest example of this idea that I can give you. And, and I just want you to know, it can be a very, very long story, but I'm going to compress it. Because the original idea of this was to be a satellite campus of City Drive. Then God changed that to a church plant, something that was going to stand on its own. Then I'm like worried, I don't know what's going on. I had to find a worship leader and a partner in doing all this. And then God showed me Abel. Then we had to go find a place to meet, and God told me to go knock on a door and ask for a building. And because of that, we got to link to Redeemer Lutheran and Pastor Mike Bailey, who have been great landlords and partners in linking to our community. Then the pandemic hit, and we were told uh, that we could stay at City Tribe until this whole pandemic thing blew over. And in that time, God asked me, do you trust my timing? Yeah, Lord. So we left. Then we started fully online, but we were getting frustrated without being in person. And God said to have patience. And because of that, we missed the single biggest spike in COVID in the whole history of the pandemic and the crazy snowstorm. All of this happened just in time for us to meet in person for the first time. Y'all, this is insane. I think if I got this plan for all this at the start, I would have gone like, no way, that's crazy. Then more recently, we learned that we're going to be in a season of getting ready, and I didn't know what to be ready for. So I went to the Lord once again. This is the year ago I was talking about earlier. He told me what I should be asking for. He wanted me to grow into something new. He gave me the right questions to ask because he knew I was ready. He asked me, why aren't you asking for that building? Y'all, I felt like I'd been given the blessing already that we're in here. But he was like, he's not done yet. He wants me to keep asking for this building, going to him about it. So I've been doing that. Then he said, ask me to feel what the community is feeling. Ask me to feel the way they are mourning in the students, the middle to high school, middle to college students, in the single moms and the senior citizens. He said, ask me to ache with the ones that ache, hurt with the ones that hurt and mourn with the ones that mourn. So for the last year, I've been doing that. I've been asking to feel what these folks feel. I've been aching with the single moms. I've been hurting with the few college students that I know. I've been mourning with my friends at the Sorrento. And as I prayed that day, a year ago, these feelings God showed me, three things that all these groups were feeling popped up. Loneliness, fear, and like a sadness and depression. So I've been doing my best personally to help out with these things. I haven't gotten a full path, but the next door has opened a few times. And I would have thought it was crazy if I got this full path a long time ago. I mean, just over the last year, we got a chance to link to the Sorrento, the, the senior living facility right next door. And then another organization that serves folks in that community called King's Compassion. Now, this organization was writing a grant with the city to serve senior citizens. And they were like, hey, do y'all need any projects that need to get help funded? So we gave them our projects, and for the rest of the year, all of the events we are planning with the Sorrento are fully funded. And there will even be funds available for a person to do the extra work needed to make these events happen. God giving us the next step. And these are all, there are a few things in the work for students that I'll, I'll bring you to the table. And we've formed some ideas on how we can better serve single moms on a large scale. But up to this point, we have spent thousands of dollars to make sure that families have rent, money, uh, food, light staying on, and bus passes. And all this happened by the grace of God, not because we worked hard, but simply because we asked. We asked the right questions. Then we went to seek. We looked, and we found the right people along the way. Now, we will continue to knock. We will knock on the door that is right in front of us. That's what we will do here as an organization in Kuo, and that's what I want you to do every day. Now, for some of us, the first door that we have to knock on, the first step for us to take through the, is the threshold of faith. For all of us to have full access to these things, like the Holy Spirit to guide us, we need to simply believe. It's not about behavior or holiness, just simply believing that Jesus is who he says he was. 
So if you want to declare or redeclare that belief today, I can help you do just that. You just have to have a conversation between you and Jesus that we would call a prayer. Now to help you out during this time, I'm going to ask all of the Akuo community to pray along with you. Because here at Akuo, no one ever has to pray alone. You always have a community praying along with you. So if you want to declare your faith to Jesus today, just between you and him, just say something like this. Just say, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you and what you did here on this earth. Today, the best way I know how, I give you my life. Amen. Now let's continue to listen as we have a few times during this message. Let's knock on that door. For our last listening moment today, I want you to ask God this. What is the next door that you want me to knock on? We'll take a few minutes to ask and listen, and then I'll come back to finish in prayer. Okay, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for today, right now, this moment. Thank you for the way that you continue to speak to us. Jesus, we ask you right now that you help us, that you help us ask the right questions, that you help us find the right people, that you show us the right doors. We ask for you to give us your will Thank you for the way that you're going to move in our lives. We love you. And we pray all these things in your holy and precious name, Jesus. Amen. All right, y'all, before we go, let me share a few things that we have going on. We'll be having our dinner groups meeting up once again, and we'll be hosting these meals in dining rooms across the area from July 21st to the 23rd. Y'all, that is this coming weekend. If you're interested in attending one of those groups, you can scan the QR code on the screen to see where you would fit in best. Now, we are always thinking of ways and about how we are linking to our community, right? It's what we've been talking about. It's what we're ready for all the time. And right now, we're in the middle of a backpack drive with Christian Assistance Ministry. We're helping families that might not have the resources to purchase school supplies for the upcoming year. So CAM, Christian Assistance Ministry, will connect us with the students and we will adopt them and buy a backpack and fill them up with all their school supplies. We have a wide range of ages from pre-K through 
high school. Y'all, there are just a few students left. So if you want to go ahead and jump in on that, do it now because backpacks are due next Sunday, July 23rd. If you're looking to get one, you can reach out to me at humby.sitveta at akuo.church to see if we have any left. Hopefully, we've got at least one left for you so you can go ahead and jump on with this. Now, normally, we also make sure that the organization of Akuo grabs a few bags as well because we want to make sure that the Akuo organization is contributing to students, right? We want to make sure that we are connected to these students. So I want you to know that when you are generous here at Akuo, it goes towards things like this us reaching out to our community, linking to them, and serving them in the best way possible, knocking on that next door. Right now, the next right door for us is handing over backpacks, right? We want to make sure that they have our talent, our treasure, all of our things. We're trying to figure out how we can give them our talent. We all know right now that we serve a God that wants us to be generous with this church, and we just thank you when you showed that here at Akuo. And I want you to know that when you give here at Akuo. I'm not hung up on the amount or the percentage or anything like that. I just want you to be listening to God. I want you to be generous in the way that he's asking you to be generous, in the way that he asks you to be a generous and loving, giving person, and leveraging what you have to help your community out. Now, if you aren't sure where to start, maybe you haven't heard from the Lord yet, maybe you just don't know. One of the many ways that you can express your generosity here at Akuo is through the biblical method of generosity called tithing, which means giving a first fruit 10% offering in the storehouse, which is your local church. That can be the place that you start at. Now, the celebration of giving might not be a possibility for you right now. And I, I understand things might be tough for you and your family. If that's you, that's okay. If things are tough for you right now, please allow us to help you. We want to be linked to you during your tough time. That's what the church exists for. So if you need anything at all, please reach out to us. Or if you know someone that needs some help, let us know. To do that, all you have to do is go to our website, akuo.church, and click on the Contact Us link. You can also send an email to us at help at akuo.church, and you can call or text the church at 210-901-8785. Now, if you are willing to give here at Akuo Church, the way you can do that is by going to our website, akuo.church. And when you get there, all you have to do is click on the giving link and follow the instructions. We also have our text to give option. For that, all you have to do is text Akuo, A-K-O-U-O, and the dollar amount you want to give to the number 77977. If you don't want to give electronically, we also have our PO box available if you would like to send your gift through a check. For that, all you have to do is mail it to Akuo at PO Box 100, 125, San Antonio, Texas, 78201. All right, y'all, that's all that I have for you today. I just want you to know that I love and appreciate all of you, and we will be praying for you now, and we will continue to pray for you throughout the week. Now, before we go, allow me just to pray over you one last time. Jesus, I just ask that as people turn off their phones and put away their tablets and turn off their TVs, I I pray that you'd be with them. I pray that you would continue to speak to them, Lord. I pray that you would show them the right doors that they're supposed to be knocking on and the right people they're supposed to be connecting to and linking up with. And I pray that you would just give them the right direction to move in. Jesus, I pray that you would remind them that you are the great father, the great parent that's going to take care of them. Remind them that even our earthly parents that are so full of sin and broken and messed up, even they know how to give good gifts. How much greater do you give? And I pray that that would encourage them to take the next steps in the journey that you have them on. We thank you for all of these things and the way that you're going to move. We love you, Lord. And we pray all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, that's all that we have for you this week. We'll see you next time. Thank you.